continuing tunaendelea sasa we thank god for such a powerful teachings nashukuru mungu kwa ajili ya mafundisho haya mazuri that we are getting from the book of daniel ama tutapata kutoka kitabu cha daniel and other references na na kupitia sehemu zingine zingine hey god richly bless you mungu akubariki sana for such a revelation the powerful uh, understanding on the subject kwa mafunuo mazuri ambayo tunastahili now we continue with the leadership subject tunaendelea na, na kipindi sasa cha cha uongozi biblical leadership uongozi wa kibiblia or you can call it christian leadership au unaweza kuita uongozi wa kikristo Let's go to the book of Philippians chapter 2. Kitabu cha Wafilipi sura ya 2. Wafilipi sura ya 2. From verse 3 to 4. Kuanzia mstari wa 3 mpaka wa 4. We will start from there today. Tutaanzia pale Wafilipi sura ya 2 mstari wa 3 mpaka wa 4. Don't be selfish. Msitene neno lolote. Usiwe mbinafsi. Don't be selfish. Mstene lolote. Malizia. Kwa kushindana. Yes. Okay. Don't try to impress to impress others. Wala kwa majivuno. Be humble. Bali uko unyenyekevu. Thinking of others as better than yourself. Akimwesamu mwenzie kuwa bora kuliko nafsi yake. Each of you should look not only to your own interests. Kila mtu asiangalie mambo yake mwenyewe but also to the interests of others. Bali kila mtu angalie na mambo ya wengine. This is the heart of biblical leadership. Huu ni moyo wa uongozi wa kibiblia. If you are to be called a leader, kama unahitajika kuitwa kiongozi, and if you are to call yourself a leader, au kama unajiita wewe mwenyewe ni kiongozi, You need to possess these characteristics. Unahitaji kuwa na hizi tabia. You must not be selfish. Usiwe mbinafsi. You must don't try to impress others. Usijaribu kwanza kujionyesha kwa wengine. You need to be humble. Unahitaji kuwa mnyenyekevu. Thinking of others as better than yourself. Na kuafikiria wengine kuwa ni wathamani kuliko wewe. This is what Paul is teaching us here. Na hichi ndicho ambacho Paulo anatufundisha hapa. That each of one sisi kila mmoja wetu each and every one kila mmoja wetu should look not only to your own gain. Usiangalie tu kwa faida yako mwenyewe but you should think about others. Lakini unataka uwafikirie na wengine. There is a this word joy. Kuna ili neno furaha. J O Y. J O Y. Joy, furaha. J O Y. J O Y. I put this word this way. Nimeweka ili neno namna hii. J stands for Jesus. J inasimama kwa ajili ya Yesu. O stands for others. Na O inasimama kwa ajili ya wengine. And uh, why stands for yourself. Na why inasema kwa ajili yako wewe sasa. So joy here kwa hiyo furaha hapa it is Jesus first, Yesu kwanza and others follows. Na, na wengine wanafuata and then lastly na mwishoni ni wewe sasa. Wow. Makofi kwa ajili ya hilo jamaa. <laughs> Amen. Amen. This is the heart of a leader. Hii ni moyo wa kiongozi. In the leadership uh, uh, duties katika majukumu ya kiongozi. You put Jesus first. Unataka umweke Yesu kwanza. Then others follows. Na wengine wanafuata. Then you are the last. Na wewe ni wa mwisho. So Jesus others you. Kwa hiyo Yesu wengine wewe. That's joy. Hiyo ni furaha. If we operate in that uh, uh, that that uh, principle kama tutemea katika hiyo kanuni 
we will have this joyous atmosphere tutakwenda kuwa na na hii hali ya hewa ya furaha everyone will be neighbor to his friend kila mmoja atakuwa ni jirani kwa mwenzake there will be no competitions at all hakutakuwa na mashindano kabisa there there will, there will be no selfishness hakutakuwa na ubinafsi because we put jesus first kwanza yesu kwanza then we put others to follow there na tutaweka wengine wafuate hapo then we come sasa tutakuja mwisho hallelujah hallelujah now when you lead or do things unapoongoza au kufanya mambo do not let selfish usifanye kibinafsi or pride au kwa kiburi be your guide usiache ubinafsi na kiburi ukuongoze selfishness always promotes personal gratification ukiwa na ubinafsi inapelekea kutaka kujiona we ni bora zaidi selfishness is contrary to the scriptures na ubinafsi ni kinyume na maandiko which commands us to have respect for the right and the feelings of others ambaye maandiko yanatuamuru kuwa kuheshimu wengine haki za wengine and this does not mean that we will allow church members to continue living in sin because we respect their rights na hii haimaanishi kwa sababu tunaheshimu haki za, za washirika tuwaruhusu endelee kuishi dhambini because of their rights and kwa sabu, their feelings kwa sababu ya, 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 ya kuheshimu haki zao na hisia zao no Apana. we will lead them according to the word of god tutawaongoza kulingana na neno la mungu with humility and love kwa kwa unyenyekevu na kwa upendo that is the meaning of influencing others na hiyo ndo maana ya kuwashawishi wengine so that they can follow examples from us ili waweze kufata mfano wetu sisi hallelujah hallelujah we will warn them with love tutawaonya kwa upendo and advise them not to continue into sin na kuwashauri wasiendelee katika dhambi and we let them decide na tutawaacha waamue whether they continue in sin au kama wataendelea dhambini au and die or they quit and leave tutawashauri kwamba kama wataka kuendelea kwenye dhambi wafe au wataacha dhambi waweze kuishi remember we all didn't deserve to be leaders kwamba kumbuka sisi wote tunastahili kuwa viongozi we didn't deserve to be leaders hatukustahili kuwa viongozi but christ put us and our conditions above his own welfare lakini mungu yesu alichukua kulingana na hali tuliyopo akatweka katika kusimama katika nafasi ambayo ya, ya kwake now paul kwa hiyo paulo calls us to do the same in our relationships with the others anatuita na kutaka tufanye hivyo hivyo kwa mahusiano yetu na wengine remember there is no leadership if there is no people kumbuka kwamba hakuna uongozi kama hakuna watu and you cannot be there as a leader and you become too judgmental na uwezo kwa kiongozi na ukaanza kwa hukumu watu you just judge everything you see una una hukumu kila kitu you judge everything you see una hukumu kila kitu unachokiona It is good to lead the people with the love of God. Ni vizuri kuongoza watu wa Mungu kwa upendo wa Mungu. And this uh, selfishness corrupts relationships with na, other people. Na na hii hali ya ubinafsi inaharibu mahusiano na watu wengine. So Paul wanted them the, the Philippians to see that the basic cause was selfishness. Kwa hiyo Paulo alitaka wao wa Philip waone kwamba tatizo kubwa ilikuwa ni ubinafsi. And the issue cause of selfishness is pride. Na sababu iliyosababisha au chanzo cha cha cha, 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 cha ubinafsi ilikuwa ni, ni kiburi. If you you have this spirit of pride. Ukiwa na hiyo ya kiburi We are getting it from the teachings of from Apostle Mark. Tujifunza kutokana na mafundisho ya mtume Mark. That's what Lucifer was. And jinsi ambavyo shetani alikuwa na kiburi. Nebukadnezar. Na Nebukadnezar alikuwa na kiburi. And even the king of Tyre. Na pia mfalme wa Tiro. You see it is very dangerous to adopt that spirit ni, of pride. Ni hatari sana kupata hiyo roho ya kiburi. You cannot be a good leader if you possess that spirit. Hauwezi kuwa kiongozi mzuri kama utakuwa na roho ya kiburi. 
Paul is showing how we can lead Christian churches. Na Paul anatuonyesha jinsi tutaongoza makanisa ya kiroho. Christian groups kuongoza vikundi vya Kikristo. Christian departments kuongoza idara idara za 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 Kikristo. He commands us to avoid leading in greediness. Ameamuru tusiishi katika tamaa. He don't want us to lead in selfishness. His goal was to remove the focus of Christian leaders from self to others. Na na lengo lake kubwa shabaha yake kubwa ni kuondoa uongozi wa Kikristo kutoka katika mtu binafsi kwenda kwa watu wengine. You know Jesus personified leadership. Yesu pia naye alichukua ule uongozi kibinafsi. He directed people into the way aliwaongoza watu wafuate njia into the truth katika kweli and the life na katika uzima and he showed the way to love na alionyesha njia ya upendo he showed the way to forgiveness alionyesha njia jinsi ya kusamehe the way to humbleness na njia jinsi ya kuwa na unyenyekevu and the way to eternal life na njia ya uzima wa milele if we are to lead kama tunataka kuongoza let us show the way nataka tuonyeshe njia to love ya kwa upendo that people may love God. Na watu wampende Mungu. Let us show the way to forgiveness. Tuoneshe watu njia ya kusamehe. And doing that by example. Na kufanya hivyo kwa mfano. Let us be humble. Tuwe wanyenyekevu. And show the way to humbleness. Na kuonesha njia ya unyenyekevu. As we influence others. Tunapowashawishi wengine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The best place to start with the defining leadership as I told you Na katika sehemu ya kwanza ya kutafsiri uongozi gani nilivyokuambia is with Jesus ni Yesu Putting it in the right way kuweka katika njia nzuri zaidi We may say that leadership means tunaweza kusema kama uongozi unamaanisha a person involved in a process of influencing and developing the group of people kwamba ni, ni mchakato wa mtu ambaye anahusika kuandaa watu na kuongoza kwa, kwa, kufikia mafanikio in order to accomplish a purpose by means of tra- supernatural power kuwasaidia kufikia kusudi waloitiwa kwa njia ya kimiujiza now in this we see the example of Christ at work na hii tunaona mfano wa Kristo akifanya kazi leadership always begins with a person na uongozi unaanzia na mtu. Someone said at a leadership seminar I attended one day. Mtu mmoja alisema katika seminar ambayo nilihudhuria wakati mmoja, a leader is a person with a magnet in his heart. Kwamba kiongozi ni mtu ambaye ana sumaku katika moyo wake and a compass in his head. Na akiwa na ile ya kuongozea uh, dira katika mkono wake, dira. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Most people have the skills to lead uh, watu wengi wana ujuzi wa kuongoza but when one is called on to marshal or to assemble or to arrange lakini mtu mmoja anapoitwa kuweza kutengeneza na kupanga those abilities in a leadership settings na huo uwezo katika mpango huo wa kupanga it is imperative inakuwa ha- imperative it is of vital importance inakuwa ni ya muhimu people respond watu wa, wa, in the way that express approval or agreement watu mara nyingi wanajibu wa, 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 pale ambapo kuna kuwa na majibizano the more leaders understand themselves Ma, pale ambapo kiongozi anajielewa au viongozi wanajielewa the better the group and the mission being saved na ndipo ambapo kutatokea na, na watu kikundi kizuri au taifa zuri leadership is distinct from management kuongoza ni tofauti na kutawala it differ leadership differs in nature from management na uongozi unatofautiana una, una kabisa na ile hali ya, ku, ya kutawala we manage things tunatawala vitu we lead people na tunaongoza watu so if you are put to be a leader ukiwekwa kuwa kiongozi even if you are a leader of two people hata kama ni kiongozi wa watu wawili 3 watatu 
then you are a leader because there are people wewe ni kiongozi kwa sababu kuna watu no people no leadership hakuna watu hakuna uongozi if there are things there, there is management eh, kama kuna vitu kuna utawala so leading people is a process accomplished over a stage of time kwa hiyo kuongoza watu ni mchakato ambao unatokea kuongoza watu baada ya muda fulani you may not understand them unaweza usielewe you may sometimes argue umeweza mkalumbana sometimes you fight wakati mwingine kupigana but as you continue lakini like unapoendelea mbele you will come together in unity utakuja pamoja katika umoja just continue to lead endelea kuongoza you don't leave the group because there is there is like the, the I, I don't understand them usiache kikundi kwa sababu asiwaelewi mimi hao watu just continue leading the people endelea kuongoza watu lead them by example of being humble waongoze kwa kuwa mfano kwa kuwa na mnyenyekevu hallelujah 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 tuseme amina jamani it needs it takes time inachukua muda through the reason of life katika kufikiri katika maisha in the good times and the hard times katika nyakati ngumu na katika nyakati nzuri and in many respects na katika hali ya heshima the process takes a lifetime kwa hiyo huo mchakato unachukua maisha so when you become a leader kwa hiyo unapokuwa kiongozi you may not succeed at once unaweza usifanikiwe mara moja but continue to be humble endelea kunyenyekea continue to uh, to to respect others endelea kuwaheshimu wengine continue to influence others endelea kuwashawishi wengine remember leading by example is the powerful leading kuongoza kwa mfano ni kuongoza kwa nguvu zaidi hello leaders hello leaders are you still there uko hapo mpaka sasa hivi there are very few finishing pro- products in ah, leadership ni wachache sana ambao wanakuja kumaliza katika ule kukamilika it proceeds along a journey of development with many turns many turns yeah ni maendeleo ambayo yanatokea wakati unapinda kona nyingi sana haijanyooka inapinda many failures sometimes wakati mwingine una fail many roundabout roads kuzunguka eh? you know leadership has many climbs ah kwa hiyo uongozi una una same nyingi za kupita along the way katika njia as we know there is no leadership without a group of people remember that hakuna uongozi kama hakuna watu kumbuka hilo if there is no a pe- the group of people to influence kama, there is no leadership kama hakuna watu ambao unawashawishi una, una hakuna uongozi hapo there must be people to influence and to develop lazima kuwepo na watu wa kuwashawishi na kuwa kuendeleza and the size of the group is an important here kwa hiyo kama ni ukubwa wa kikundi hauna umuhimu sana hapa it is irrelevant haina umuhimu sana it really does it matter haijalishi kwa kweli you can be a leader of two people unaweza kuwa kiongozi wa watu wawili you have this department with the five people una hii idara ina watu watano and you lead them na unawaongoza you have this church with 10 people una kanisa na watu kumi. you lead them unawaongoza someone say amen mtu mmoja aseme amina na waona hallelujah hallelujah effective leadership occurs when those served feels loved na uongozi ambao wenye mguso ni ule ambao unasababisha watu wajisikie kupendwa when they feel ad- admired wanapoonekana kama wanajaliwa they feel appreciated wanaona kama unawajali una na kwa kutambua and also they, when they feel accepted na pia wanajihisi kukubalika if you are a leader kama ni kiongozi you need to love the group you lead unatakuwa upende kikundi unacho kiongoza you need to admire them unatakuwa uwatamani you need to appreciate them unatakuwa kuwatambua appreciate the way they are 
just with their weaknesses appreciate them that the way God made them be. and there is a purpose why God made them to be that way so as a leader lead by example admire the people appreciate the people when, you know when this relational dynamics are absent from the group you, you lead this relational dynamics which is love admiration appreciating and acceptance kupenda kujali kutambua yakikosekana the leader and the leadership process suffers kwa hiyo kiongozi na ule mchakato wa uongozi unakupata tabu unless the leader takes time to invest in the people mpaka pale kiongozi achukue muda na kuwekeza ndani ya watu there will be no true leadership hakutakuwa na uongozi hapo leadership is a gift uongozi ni karama that is end over time ambao unapatikana baada ya muda so the process is not an easy job i know na umchakato sio kazi rahisi kwa kweli sometime they may offend you wakati mwingine wanaweza wakakwaza they may make mockery of you wakati mwingine wanaweza wakaanza hata wakakutaja majina ya sofa but continue to lead the people lakini endelea kuongoza watu that is dr jangala son kama yeye that is dr jangala huyo ni dr jangala son in my leadership process katika mchakato wa uongozi wangu ever since i started being a pastor tangu nilipoanza kuwa mchungaji oh my goodness oh mungu wangu there are people you think if you were you, you a soldier a policeman kuna watu unasema ningo kama police you can put them to jail and <laughs> let them there die ungewachukua watu kaweka jela wafe kule but because that is the leadership kwa sababu uongozi hauhitaji hivyo you need to be patient unahitajika kuwa mvumilivu and not to be selfish na usiwe mbinafsi amen somebody say amen tumoja aseme amina Sometimes you may quarrel. Sometimes you may misunderstand each other. You may disagree. Then you come together again. It takes time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that is what children do. Na hicho ndicho ambacho watoto wanafanya. And Jesus said you need to be like a child. Wakati Yesu aliposema unatakiwa kuwa kama mtoto. You know what do children do? Unajua watoto wanafanya nini? They play together. Wanacheza pamoja. They fight. Wanapigana. They laugh. Wanacheka. And their lives move on, moves on. Na maisha yanaendelea mbele. As a leader, kama kiongozi You were not given angels. Ujapewa uongoze malaika. You are leading people. Unaongoza watu. With this influence of the devil around them. Na wakiwa wanashawishiwa na shetani. It takes time. Inachukua muda. Don't quit. Usioache. Please lead by example. Ongoza kwa mfano. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know Christ's model of leadership is what we are to follow. There's no finer example for Christian leadership than our Lord Jesus Christ the Messiah. He declared I am a good shepherd. Mimi ni mchungaji mwema. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep that is John chapter 10 verse 11 you need to give out your life for the people you are given to lead it is within this verse that we see the perfect description of Christ 
as a leader. Tuna katika kifungu hiki tunaona kabisa ule mtizamo wa Yesu kama kiongozi. He is one who acts as a shepherd to those sheep. Na yeye ndio ni mmoja ambaye amejitoa kama kiongozi kwa wale wa kondoo. And this is what you ought to be. Na anakutaka wawe jinsi ambavyo walitakiwa wawe. Be as a shepherd to that group. Na unatakuwa uwe uwe mchungaji kwa hicho hicho kikundi ambacho unakiongoza. You know leadership is not only about being a pastor. Na uongozi sio sio kuwa mchungaji. You can be a chairman of ladies. Unaweza kuwa mwenyekiti wa wanawake. You can be chairman of choirs. Unaweza kuwa mwenyekiti wa kwaya. You can be chairman of youth department. Unaweza kuwa mwenyekiti wa idara ya vijana. You can lead the group of evangelists. Unaweza kuongoza kikundi cha uinjilisti. When you lead you become a shepherd. Unapoongoza unakuwa mchungaji of that particular group. Wa hicho kikundi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone say amen. Tumoja aseme amina. So when Jesus referred to us as sheep, Yesu aliposema si kama kondoo, he was not speaking in affectionate term. Alikuwa aongee katika ile hali ya kimahusiano. In truth, sheep rank among the dumpest animals in creation. I I mean sheep among the lions. Okay. Uh, kwamba ni kondoo ni kama wanyama ambao ni wanaonekana kama wajinga they are they are not safe na na pia kondoo wakiwa katikati ya ya simba wanakuwa hawako salama a stray sheep become disoriented confused na 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 kondoo akiwa mahali hapo anakuwa kabisa kama mtu kama ameachwa na anachanganyikiwa and it become incapable of finding its way back to the flock na anakuwa hana tena uwezo wa kupata kurudi njia ya kurudi nyumbani it it become unable to avoid these hungry lions na anakuwa hawezi kujiepusha na hawa simba wakali so the stray sheep is perhaps the most helpless in all creatures. Ah kwa hiyo kama kondoo aliyepotea anakuwa ni mmoja wa 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 mnyama ambaye kama gani? It might be the um, among the 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 is the animal that is helpless. It anakua, has no help. Anakuwa ni kama mnyama asiyekuwa na na na, na msaada. So Jesus call us his sheep. Kwa hiyo Yesu alitueta sisi ni kondoo wake. He simply mean that without shepherd ana ina maanisha kwa kifupi kama bila mchungaji we are helpless tutakuwa hatuna msaada that group without you as a leader na hiyo inasababisha kama kiongozi that group without you as a leader na hicho kikundi bila we kiongozi is helpless inakuwa kina msaada amen amen so if you are given any group to lead kama umepewa kikundi chochote kuongoza you become shepherd on that group kuwa mchungaji wa hicho kikundi sema amina Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The shepherd is one who has several roles in regard to his sheep. Kwa hiyo mchungaji ndio anakuwa na majukumu kwa hicho kikundi anachokiongoza. He lead, he leads the sheep. Anaongoza kondoo. He protects the sheep. Anawachunga kondoo. The shepherd of Lord's flock leads the by modeling godliness and righteousness in his own life. Kwa hiyo mchungaji ambaye ana Mungu ndani mwake anaongoza wale kondoo waishi maisha yanayompendeza Mungu. And encouraging others to follow his example. Na kuatia moyo wengine wafuate mfano wake. You must not say follow me as I'm not doing. Usiseme kwamba yale nayafanya kwamba msiyafuate yale nayafanya lakini mfanye yale nayosema. Say what I say but not do what I'm, I, I I do. No. Hey. Asema kile anachosema hakusifanye kile anachokitenda. You must lead by example. Unataka uongoze kwa mfano. The choir must be led by example of leaders. Kwa hiyo choir inatakuwa iongoze na viongozi wa mfano. Young men, women, wa, evangelists, vijana, church, vijana wadogo, wainjilisti. Wa of course in Christian leadership katika uongozi wa Kikristo our ultimate example and the one we should follow is Christ himself na mtu ambaye utakao tumfuate na kumwangalia ni Yesu Kristo the christian leader is the one who follows Christ 
and inspire others to follow Christ. Kwa hiyo kwa uongozi wa Biblia ni yule anayemfuata Kristo na anashawishi wengine wamfuate Kristo. Turn to your neighbor tell your neighbor. Ngeukia jana yako mwambie jirani yako. The Christian leader, kiongozi wa Kikristo, is the one who follows Christ. Ni yule anayemfuata Kristo and inspire others to follow Christ. Na anashawishi wengine wamfuate Kristo. You didn't say to your neighbor. I want you to say to tell your neighbor. Mwambie jirani yako. And I want you I want to hear your voice. Na nataka nisikie sauti yako. Mwambie The Christian leader, kiongozi wa Kikristo, is the one who follows Christ. Ni mmoja anayemfuata Kristo and inspire others to follow Christ. Na anawashawishi wengine wamfuate Kristo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't come up here with the pride. Usije hapa na kiburi. You come here with sinful nature unakuja hapa ukiwa na, na, na hali ya dhambi pretending to lead others kujifanya unaongoza wengine no we are marching toward jerusalem tunapiga hatua kwenda yerusalem we are going to heaven tunakwenda mbinguni we are trying by all means to avoid hell tunajitahidi kwa jinsi yote kutokwenda jehanamu when the rapture takes place wakati unyakuwa utapachukua nafasi will you be among us ask your neighbor muulize mwenzako je unyakuwa ukija wewe utaona Roka. ask your neighbor when rapture takes place je unyakuwa ukija will you be there utakuwa pale will you be there utaenda tell your neighbor but you are calling yourself a leader and you are not even sure unajiita wewe ni kiongozi lakini hata una uhakika tell your neighbor you are calling yourself a leader and you are not even sure of going to heaven hebu mwambie mwenzako kwamba unajiita wewe kiongozi na hata una uhakika kwenda mbinguni mwambie mwenzako I know because you are born again you are sure we are going together. Najua kwa sababu muokoka una uhakika tutakwenda mbinguni haleluya. But we need to lead others. Lazima kuongoza wengine to follow Christ. Wamfuate Kristo. Those who are already in Christ. Wale ambao tayari wako kwa Kristo they need to be led. Watakiwa kuongozwa. And those who are still outside of Christ. Na wale ambao wako nje ya Kristo they are needed to be influenced. Watakiwa washawishiwe to follow Jesus Christ. Kumfuata Yesu Kristo. Someone say amen. Tumoja aseme amen. Paul understood this principle and uh, said, Paulo alielewa hizo kanuni na akasema, Follow me as I follow Christ. Nifuate mimi kama ninavyomfuata Kristo. That is a biblical leadership. Hiyo ndio uongozi wa kibiblia. You need to lead other people as you yourself follows Christ. Watakao kuongoza watu wengine wewe mwenyewe kwa namfuata Kristo. That is 1 Corinthians chapter 11 ni wa Korinto wa kwanza 11 and verse 1 wa kwanza So under the plan God has ordained for the church na kati chini ya mpango ambao Mungu aliandaa kwa ajili ya kanisa leadership is a position of humbleness uongozi ni sehemu ya unyenyekevu a position of loving na sehemu ya, ya kupenda and service na kutumika So position of humbleness na fasting ya and service unyenyekevu na na, na na kutumika church leadership is ministry not management na uongozi wa, wa kikanisa ni kuongoza na sio kutawala we are not managers over people sisi sio watawala wa watu We are not bosses over people. Sisi sio mabosi juu ya watu. We are simply leaders who ministers to ni, them. Ni ni viongozi ambao tunawatumikia watu. Those whom God designed as leaders are called not to be governors, monarchs. Um, wale ambao wameitwa na Mungu kutumika hawajaitwa wewe magavana au kuwa kama wafame wanaotawala watu. But humble slaves lakini watumwa wanyenyekevu not slick celebrities sio watu ambao wanatakiwa kujionyesha na, na kuwa kama masta but laboring servants lakini watumishi ambao wanatumika those who would lead god's people in the level in any level i mean wale watu ambao wanaongoza watu wa Mungu katika hatua uh, yoyote must above all exemplify sacrifice lazima waishi maisha ya kujitolea au kujidhabiu jesus himself gave us the pattern the structure of submission na yesu mwenyewe ametupatia mfumo wa jinsi ya kujinyenyekesha 
when he stood, he, he stupid, he bended downwards to wash his disciples' feet. That's a task that was customarily done by the lowest of slaves. Yeah, You must remember that even in slavery, those days they were levels. There were levels of slavery those days. So the washing of feet were done by the slaves of the lowest level. In the book of John, Chapter 13, verse 4 to 17. Let's get there. John chapter 13. I wonder whether I still have time there. Okay, John chapter 13, verse 4. To 17. We will read, we will break as we read. We read as Tuta, follows. Tosoma kama Rose from supper and laid aside his garment. Chakulani, kando mavazi yake. Took a towel and greeted himself. Akatoa kitamba, akajifunga kiunoni. Did you hear that? <coughs> you know, taking off his outer robe, closing with the towel na around his waist, he is here, he is dressing in the grave of a slave preparing to render service. Without his outer robe, uh, it was so nice that robe. It was so nice and very expensive. It was smooth, woven, seamless robe. So, when he removed that robe, he was left with a a short garment like a long undershirt that is what Gentile slaves would often wear to save a meal. Na hivyo ndivyo ambavyo anavovaa mtumwa ambaye anahudumia watu chakula. So that express that is expression of his greatest act of love. Na hiyo ilikuwa inaonesha tendo lake kubwa la upendo. You know the usual time for foot washing is when guests arrive at their destination when they visit you. Na pale ambapo kuoshwa miguu inapofanyika ni pale ambapo yule mgeni amefika katika pale ambapo ni mwisho wa safari yake. And foot washing is a gracious act of hospitality for guests who have walked the dusty road to their destination. Kwa hiyo kuoshwa kwa miguu ni kitendo cha heshima kwa yule mgeni ambaye ametembea kwenye njia yenye vumbi katika kwa kufika kwenye sehemu ambayo kwa naenda. And the only gentile slaves of lowest level were required to do it. Na mtumwa ambaye wa ngazi ya chini kabisa kutoka mataifa ambayo sio muiza ndio atakuwa afanye hicho kitendo. Why did Jesus do so? Sasa inakuja Yesu afanye hivyo. Why didn't his disciples take the duty and wash others? Kwa nini wanafunzi wake wasingechukua hiyo nafasi na kuosha wengine? You know look in the gospel in Kati, his gospel Luka katika kitabu chake he records an incident in which disciples were arguing. Ametuelezea habari ambapo 
wanafunzi walikuwa wakibishana they were arguing among themselves concerning which was greatest walikuwa wanabishana nani ambaye ni mkubwa you can get that from Luke, the book of Luke chapter 22 unaweza kupata kwenye kitabu cha Luka 22 from verse 24 to 27 24 24 27 and Jesus in verse 27 in Na the Yesu book of Luke katika kitabu katika mstari wa 22 mstari wa 27 he asked them akawauliza who is greater nani ni mkubwa au mkuu is who is he who sits at the table ni yule ambaye anaketi kwenye meza or he who serves au yule ambaye anatumika is it not who he who sit at the table si yule ambaye anakaa kwenye meza yet i am among you as the one who serves lakini katikati yenu ndio yeye ambaye mnatumikia yet i am among you Okay hata hivyo mimi niko katikati yenu as the one who serves ambaye nawatumikia in other meaning katika maana nyingine you are, you are supposed to, to be serving sawa mtakuwa mtumikie but look here i'm serving lakini angalia mimi nawatumikia nyinyi that the heart of a leader huo ni moyo wa kiongozi you don't leave things to be done by others atuachi vitu vifanywe na wengine you lead by example unaongoza kwa mfano in everything you do everything you say katika kila kitu unafanya katika kila kitu unasema let them follow you as example wacha wakufuate wewe kama mfano so the question here was between the master and a slave kwa hiyo swali ilikuwa hapa ni kati ya bwana na mtumwa who is greater nani ni mkubwa do you think these, these disciples who were uh, who were greatness minded people je unajua kwamba katikati ya mitume wanafunzi kwamba walikuwa na mawazo ya kutaka nani ni mkubwa you think they could humble themselves to the level of a slave to wash others feet je unafikiri kwamba hao wanafunzi ambao walikuwa wanawaza kuwa mtu mkubwa wangeza kunyenyekea na kuosha watu wengine miguu and let me ask you can you humble yourself je ni kuuza swali je unaweza kunyenyekesha and they do the less to the church na kufanya vile vitu ambavyo ni vinyonge kwa ajili ya kanisa can you je unaweza kufanya hivyo or when you become a leader unapokuwa kiongozi you always come late unakuja umechelewa and go earlier na unaondoka mapema hello hello are we still together bado tuko pamoja We are to lead by example. Tutatakiwa kuongoza kwa mfano. Can you humble yourself and do the less in the church? In the ministry in the group you do? Unaweza kujinyenyekesha na kufanya vitu vinyonge katika kikundi au katika kanisa? Can you lay aside your titles, your honor, your glory? Je, unaweza ukaacha vyo vyako, heshima yako au And get engaged into serving na kufanya vitu ambavyo ni vinyonge? Can you sweep and mop the church? Unaweza ukafagia na kudeki kanisa? Can you come early in the church and arrange chairs and instruments? Unaweza kuja mapema kanisani na kupanga viti na, na vyombo? Oh because of your title. Au kwa sababu ya ya vyo vyako. Because of your money. Kwa sababu ya pesa zako. Because of your education. Kwa sababu ya elimu yako. You want to come the time whereby they have arranged everything for you. Unataka uje wakati wameshapanga kila kitu kwa ajili yako. You come late, you Unakuja. leave early. Unakuja umechelewa, unaondoka mapema. Sometimes we try to call you for help. Wakati mwingine tunakuita kwa ajili ya kutoa msaada only to be told by your telephone. Na unaambiwa na simu yako the greater leader you are calling mkiongozi mkubwa unayempigia simu can never be a slave awezi kuwa mtumwa please find those of low status tafadhali tafuta wale wa hadhi ya chini hello are you still here bado uko hapa hello am i talking to someone today naongea na mtu mmoja leo You know sometimes we need people who can do things so that things can move on. Unajua wakati mwingine watu wanataka kufanya vitu ili vitu viweze kwenda. But it is unfortunately you can't get even leaders. Wakati mwingine uwezi kupata hata viongozi. Everyone want others 
to do for him. You don't want you to do for others. You want others to do for you. Hello somebody. Hello somebody. That is not the heart of a leader. The leader must engage into serving others. We pause by there and we start from there tomorrow. And God bless you. Hallelujah.